Okay, uh, what I did here now is I put the heated the pistons up with uh, well I used a propane torch. You could use a little toaster oven or something. You only need them about oh 140 degrees, just about what you can barely hold on to with your hands, or you can heat it up warm enough to uh, hold it with a paper towel. And by heating it up and then pushing the the uh, wrist pin into the piston through the bearing and then putting the snap ring in on the other side. Whenever you fool with snap rings make sure you got those rags around the the uh, connecting rods. Then after that I pinch the rings together, I oil up the piston a little bit, pinch the rings together uh, at the gap and lower the cylinders down over the pistons. Usually with the piston I run the cylinder up to the top of the stroke and then try to slide the cylinder down on it. Now usually it takes a little rock into the piston to get it in there, but there's a taper on the bottom of the cylinder that helps you get the cylinder to go down on there. But once you get it down, it's real important with a 447, uh, these cylinders you'll see have clearance around these studs that hold everything down on there. So before I put the heads on and tighten these bolts, I will got to make sure that this cylinder isn't twisted one way or the other. Uh, this particular engine has uh, just a single manifold, single intake manifold. Uh, so I put that on there. It's just put on there loosely, not, not tight or anything. No gaskets in there. But that is a f sort of a flat surface that's going to hold these cylinders parallel with each other. So one cylinder isn't twisted like this or something on there. And I do that just before I tighten this down. Rotax has a stool, a plate, special tool. It's just a plate that holds these things square for you. Uh, you could use the exhaust manifold, but sometimes the exhaust manifolds are kind of warped up from the heat and stuff. I like this. If I got a single carb, I'd use this. If it was a dual carb engine, I'd have to probably use the exhaust manifold. But that way, everything sits in there. You're not putting a <clears throat> strain on anything. Uh, as far as the engine goes, the twisting of the cylinders a little bit wouldn't hurt anything, but uh, <clears throat> the manifolds can get warped because if I tighten these down and then try to put this manifold on and tighten it up with those things, it would actually warp this thing, maybe even bust off one of these ears because it wasn't square and you're trying to pull that thing down on something that isn't square. Fortunately, the intake gaskets are pretty thick on one of these. But the engine seems really tight. It's uh, Crank is really tight, no play in it. I mean, this is a beautiful engine. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish putting it back together. Torque the heads down on there. Put some new head gaskets in here with, uh, put the heads on there. And uh, and this engine part of this thing should be done. I'll probably have to do a little bit more to put the gearbox together. But uh, as I recall, getting it apart, I think maybe I should put the air shrouds on before I put that gearbox back together. Okay, uh, I put the engine mounted back up on the airframe here just temporarily because uh, I'm going to be taking this, this is the, what it uses for a five gallon gas tank and uh, I think I'm going to mount that in there like so and run a filler neck up out of here and have it maybe come through here if I'm lucky. Uh, right on the back of the plane. It'll be kind of be behind a prop. You'll have to turn the prop to the right position to put fuel in it. But I want to be able to fuel this thing without having to pour it inside. I think I mean, it'll be kind of like a car or something. Uh, take a cap off here, put the fuel in, it'll run inside the tank. Uh, I have another tank I might put on as a auxiliary tank too, or to, could be used for that. Uh, I think I found out why the engine uh, why the fellow might have been having trouble with it. I think those EGT probes were probably giving him a problem because he wasn't getting hot enough EGT reading because the probes weren't working right so he kept leaning out the needle. He had the needle in the leanest position and probably just had it running too lean mid-range. The main jet was alright so I'm sure if he went full throttle it ran just fine but uh, anything below full throttle you're, you're talking about the needle jet controlling that and that that needle on that slide has to be in the right position. So, uh, anyways, what I'm working on now, you know, the engine's all done. 
Uh, the only modification I made to the gearbox, I of course put a new gasket in and don't see any oil leaking out of it. Uh, I did put uh, a vent on here. He had a hose on. I know a lot of them did that, especially with this A box, but I, I made this thing <clears throat> as a cap. It's just made out of aluminum. And uh, there's a little vent hole on the side to vent the gearbox. But that's about the only part I made for the thing. Uh, put the fuel pump on the way he had it because I think that's a really slick mount. There's nothing wrong with that. My fuel lines will go here to the carburetor. Uh, and I'll probably have a hole somewhere here where they'll pass through in here. This all's going to be recovered, the, the bottom of this thing, because uh, I took the material off because I want to check all the the weldments and everything here, make sure they're good. Um, I'm making a modification to this pull rope. It, it went around a little pulley. Pulley, I think, was too small in diameter. So I took that off, and I'm going to put another pulley on so that it runs right straight here. It'll be more of a straight pull. I think the I think the starter ropes will last longer if I can get a little bit better of a, a pulley system there. Because this plane, you can start from inside while you're flying. Uh, tore the seats out. And uh, anyways, I think the, the plane's about ready to do some serious work on now. I've got to do some rewiring. But uh, that's all the progress for now anyway. Just, just a little update. I'm putting a uh, plate in here where I can mount the switches. Uh, the switches right now are on this wooden board. Uh, looks like three toggle switches on there. Uh, but any switches I think I'll put here on the side of the seat, close to my choke lever. Uh, the seat itself, being fiberglass, had some cracks in it. I'll show you that in a minute. That's going to need repaired. This, this is the trim here. You, you rotate this wheel, you reach down beside the seat, turn this wheel to adjust the trim on the stabilator. This this whole elevator moves back and forth. They call it a stabilator, I guess. The seats on these things are uh, notoriously thin. I don't know if you can see just how thin that is, but it's almost like a not even a piece of cardboard this would be thicker than that. Uh, you can see it's broken here, uh, broken here, in this area, I can see that somebody has put some fiberglass reinforcement on there, and uh, and that seems to have held up rather well. In fact, it looks like they put a strip right down here. That's certainly a reinforcement it could use, but uh, I do think I'm going to uh, re uh, reinforce this and you know, put some, put some fiberglass resin in that crack. And, and lay a little another sheet of fiberglass on there. A little bit more laying up of fiberglass would definitely make this stronger. Also, one thing it always needs, you got to find the low point of the seat and drill a hole in it. So if you ever do get any water in that seat, it's got a way to run out. But that's that's my plans for the seat. As you can see here, I've got the BRS chute out of there. It fires up through this hole. I want to do a little modification to the mount on that. But the biggest modification I made here is this gas tank filler neck. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, this will be where I put my gasoline in here. It'll run down this tube and into the tank. One of the problems, of course, is the plane sits back on the tailwheel when there's no pilot in it. And so it's a little hard to get the gasoline to run uphill, but I think that's going to work. You might say, well, why don't I turn the gas tank around and fill it from on this side, but then I'd have a pocket of trapped air over here. So I'm thinking if I can, I'd like to fill it from here, get the most amount of gas on there. I want all my five gallons. That's all an ultralight's allowed to have, so I want to have that. But... Uh, as you can see, the wiring, it needs cleaned up. Um, I'm going to try to simplify some of this and put some of it into uh, maybe some wire loom or something to make it look a little bit neater after I figure out what all the wires do. But uh, 
anyways, that's where this project stands as of today.